Welcome to the Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024, live from Paris, France. Join hosts Savannah Peterson, Dustin Kirkland, and Rob Strache as they interview some of the brightest minds in cloud native computing. Coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con is brought to you by Red Hat, CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. The Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024 begins right now. Good afternoon, Cloud Native community, and welcome back to KubeCon here in absolutely fabulous Paris. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be joined by analyst Rob Stretch. Oh my God, I'm with Dustin. Rob. Jeez, it's because Rob's been there next to me the whole time. All right, get me out of here. We're no, Rob. we're gonna have to start that over, guys. Anyway, uh, no. Anyway, Matt, I'm even more delighted that it's Dustin. Okay, good. That's what that? I wanted to hear. Good recovery. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm you good. You spoke today. How's, how's your morning been? Uh, it's good. Been busy. Yeah. yeah. You've been grooving. Yeah, back and forth, back and forth. I got a hard stop here in uh, 20 minutes, so. All right, well, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for the heads up, bro. Love it. Uh, more importantly, we have a fantastic guest with us. We have Matt, who's been on the show multiple times, and we've also got the fabulous Bailey joining us. Very excited to have our first Wasm conversation of the show. Before we get into it, how's it going for you? You having fun, Bailey? Oh, you got I'm a big having smile. a blast, having a blast. Yeah. Lots and lots of Wasm happening all across the floor. I love to see it. I like thinking about that of just wasm spread across the floor right yes. now. Like, it looks like blue carpet. It's actually, actually wasm. wasm. <laughs> <laughs> How about for you, Matt? Oh, this has been fantastic. The energy level here is just is so it? good right now. So good. And you know, you cannot complain about being in Paris. I, yeah. It's just like. <laughs> yeah. And if you do, get out. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Off the blue Go. carpet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no wasm blue carpet <laughs> for you after that. You both had some big announcements. Bailey, I'm going to start with you. What did you announce this yeah, week? Yeah, uh, we launched a Wasm Cloud 1.0. That's our CNCF project. We're pretty excited about that. Uh, yeah, we, we're also applied to incubating. Uh, I'm hoping that announcement will come out fairly soon, but that one hasn't come out yet. Uh, we hit all the criteria for incubating and graduated, so I'm feeling pretty confident about that one. That's great. Uh, and I would say uh, Matt and I both can talk about this one, which is uh, WASI.2 has launched as of January 24th, and that is just for the greater community, and that's just amazing and, uh, to see. Yeah. 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 Stay, I love that. A we big can, you part, can fist bump. All, I, you right. Right. You, I, I'm not allowed to arm. jump. I'm told, yeah. but I'm allowed yeah. to fist pump. Yeah. So, and that's <laughs> these standards that we work on together are just absolutely essential to get the the right playing field out there for people to build production layer applications on top of. So Wazi P2, Wazi 0.2. .2, we don't even know what we're <laughs> calling it right now. We're this, innovating live. That's here. right. Innovating yeah. live. We're innovating <laughs> on the fly. Yeah. Uh, but it's so important to get those kinds of things out there with the community support. You know, Fastly was in there. Uh, uh, Microsoft, SUSE, dozens of companies in here working together to say we're building the right foundation, the blue carpet, so that everybody else can kind of build their applications on top of it. That 0.2 release was a really big deal for a lot of us and we're very excited about it. And so it. now you can take the exact same WebAssembly component, run on our platform, run on Fermion's platform, and it's just ultimately portable because that's the power of standards. All right, I want to ask about the- Well stated. I want to ask about the journey to, toward a WASM platform, okay? Uh, walk me from, I don't know, how someone gets started with their, I don't know, first applications uh, to maybe some of the biggest that you've seen in production today. Wow, okay, I'll, I'll take a swing and then, uh, then you can go for it. Uh, so usually, uh, you just add dash dash target. It is really that simple <laughs> because WebAssembly is a high level compilation target that many languages support. So if you're building in Rust, you say dash dash target, WASM32, WASI, and you're going to outcome uh, a WebAssembly module. Uh, so that's part of the story. Uh, but with the WebAssembly component model, which we launched uh, with WASI.2, uh, that adds in uh, another layer of like metadata so it's, a, it's another .wasm uh, type. And so to get that, uh, there's a series of tools that we developed within the Bytecode Alliance Foundation. You use one of those tools like Componentize Pi that comes from Joel Dice working at Fermion or you use uh, the Go SDK that we have there. Build with that and then out comes a component. And, and it's, it should be that easy. If it's not, please follow GitHub issues. We are an open community, <laughs> open to contribution. 
And it has been exciting to kind of see the momentum building. I mean, we've we've talked here and there about WebAssembly, and it's gone from its you know new and shiny and experimental phase into sort of like the where are we going to apply this phase? And what we're seeing this year is really how it's getting used in production. So in the keynote stage this morning, uh, Michelle Donani from from Fermion, Ralph Squalachi from Microsoft, and Kai Walter from Zeiss, which is an optical lens manufacturer that does phenomenal, amazing stuff. Uh, they showed uh, the, the work they've been doing is uh, churning through tens of thousands of records using WebAssembly in a way that drives down the cost of running their Kubernetes cluster and drives the efficiency up through the roof. And that's Compelling. right there, this excellent proof point that WebAssembly now has found the right application in this Kubernetes world to bring costs down and, and really start to tell this very compelling density story that allows people to do more with less. So, so is this an inflection moment for Wasm? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think that's that's the big takeaway for us. The yeah. tenor of the conversations at the booths are so different this year. Mm. I mean, it was not long ago that I spent all day answering the question, well, what is WebAssembly? <laughs> and now it's, we are so, oh, somebody literally came up to me and said, we are so excited. We've tried this, we know where it's going to work. Tell us how to get from point A to point B because we are in, right? And those are the level of conversations you really want to be having. And it shows the maturity of the ecosystem. You know, again, Wazi Preview 2 was a huge mile stone for that, but it also really shows how bringing WebAssembly into the Kubernetes ecosystem during a time when there's a lot of downward cost pressure, when there's a lot of emphasis on more compute because of AI, uh, is a perfect timing. It just feels like one of those moments where you're watching, you've been hoping that these two things would merge together and here it just happened right before our eyes. Hearing the user stories has been really amazing at Wasm Day. We had two different uh, customer stories. Orange, which is a telco, so you're yeah. like, whoa, telecoms are here. Uh, and then we also had uh, machine metrics, so uh, automation on the industry factory floor. So two uh, really interesting use cases, both using CNCF Wasm Cloud, and you know, it's just, you look around and you look at all these different projects that are out there, everybody is uh, figuring out what their solution is to be Wasm native. It's, it's such an exciting time, and I, I'm just sitting here smiling because I remember when we met in Detroit, and it was so new. I felt like yeah. you were essentially yeah. defining Wasm yep. on yep. the show, I'm certainly upskilling me in that moment, and, <laughs> and, and now to hear you say that, people coming up and excited, and, and, and not just a hypothetical thing, like the conversation around AI, it's still a lot of hypothetical stuff right now. Yeah. The implementation isn't quite there, and you're seeing people deploy at scale and- In yeah. production. Yeah, yes. and properly. <laughs> How does that make you feel when you hear those stories? It blows me away because uh, as Matt knows, it's been a little bit of a long time coming for developing the standard, right? Standards move slow. Uh, and you know, we've been working on it together collaboratively. It's, uh, it's very much an open community, open standard within the W3C. But getting it right is incredibly difficult because Wasm runs True. everywhere on every platform, every operating system, architecture, all of it. In the browser, not in the browser, uh, embedded even, and so trying to solve that wide design space is incredibly difficult, but we did it. <laughs> so. Exactly. I want to yeah. dig into that a little bit, yeah, especially yeah. for the edge use cases, right? I mean, that, that there's been a lot of talk this week yeah. about yeah. edge use cases, and I mean, from what I know about WebAssembly, it's really well suited to many edge use cases. Yeah, really both near and far edge. But the, you know, the really interesting ones are the edge cases where you're talking about running in a factory or running right. in, uh, in, in, in the dashboard entertainment system of a car. Right. right. And so you're getting environments like that where you can run the same code that you're running on you know, far edge, you know, CDN networks yeah. like Akamai, uh, at Azure Front Door, places like that, and the same ones that are running in the Kubernetes clusters that, you, that you're going to run into as kind of the de facto all around here. And it really is, you know, back when Java was first a thing, you know, the whole idea behind Java was we can write this application once and we can run it anywhere. It turned out we needed about 20 more years of refinement, research, development, and stuff like that, but WebAssembly is sort of the realization of those initial desires that were in the early Java community, which I admit I'm old enough to remember very, very well, and it's really exciting to see that happen, like before our eyes, and I mean, we know it's, it's been a lot of work, but it's work that we're seeing pay off, and when you watch that moment where somebody says, oh, I get it, and this is going to be really helpful to us. Yeah. Oh, that's just awesome. And we've experienced that, I think, time and time again, this particular KubeCon. 
I, I love to hear that, and, it, and it's nice to see the evolution. I mean, it's, it's, you say you know, it's a lot of work and it took time. For me, in terms of our conversations, it's been less than two years, yeah. which, is, which is pretty cool to see that level of adoption. Digging into the use cases a little bit, because I think you just mentioned two, two fun ones. What are some of the applications, not just as professionals, but, in your, but using your personal hat for, for this <laughs> moment, what are some of the applications here of Wasm that really get you excited? Wow, uh, there are so many. I feel like while I've been here, people have been pitching their personal ideas, so I can't quite say all of them, but that's like, the, like Matt said, it, we've transitioned from what is it to how do I use it, and then now it's also turning into the like, I have a use case, let's go. Uh, so for just about everybody that talks to me on CNC of Wasm Cloud in our pro project pavilion, it's all been like, my home lab needs this. <laughs> <laughs> I need to build with this, this is how I'm going to host everything at home, I'm going to do home automation, and, and I love it. I'm like, yeah, open source it so that I can do it and maybe not uh, spend my whole Saturday on it, just the part that's really fun, which is making it run. So uh, I think that one I'm really into. Great. Yeah, and for me, a lot of the work with the AI world now, you know, to set up a big, giant, fancy development environment in AI is actually prohibitively expensive and very, very difficult. But be able to do this in the WebAssembly world, where uh, you can do inferencing on my cheap PC if I'm willing to wait for it to do, or push it up to powerful NVIDIA GPUs. I have had a really good time putting together what started as demos and then gradually become more and more fun side projects. Um, I've, I've done everything from reminders to help me feed my dog to crossword puzzle helpers that don't <laughs> solve the puzzle for me, but just set me on the right track. It's really fun when you try and get an LLM to lie to you and say, here are five cities that <laughs> might fit in here. By the way, I'm obligated to tell you three, four, and five don't actually fit. Uh, but there have been <laughs> things like that that are just fun applications yeah. of these emerging technologies that can make use of WebAssembly's portability, its speed, and it's sort of like, really just great compute technology, right? That, that otherwise we'd be buying very expensive hardware to do. I think that's one of the most exciting things for me about WebAssembly is that it actually can solve personal problems that, that, that developers yeah. really personally itches they want to scratch. And that differs from a, a Kubernetes, right? And everything here yeah. at CNC is about <laughs> Kubernetes. Yes. But there's no personal problem that a Kubernetes cluster has ever, <laughs> you know, solved for right. you at, at yeah. home on the weekend. I'm trying to think of a counterexample. I really am. Right. right. <laughs> but like, I, yeah, my head point. is it's racing with like the places where I could use WebAssembly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's it's really the flexibility of WebAssembly that I think is really giving it that takeoff moment. And and with the customers that we talked to in the telco space, they were doing an experiment with Kubernetes on the edge, and they kind of realized maybe this isn't the right fit, but Wasm Cloud and Wasm on the Edge, that's the right thing for us. It gives us that flexibility to decide what's on-prem, what's not, and how to distribute to all these edges that maybe don't fit well with Kubernetes. And uh, you know, hey, if somebody creates a home lab and they want to run it at scale, they can do that too, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Uh, that dot Wasm uh, can scale way, 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 way up, uh, as, as Matt was talking about with density. That's cool. So what's next? You've had some big announcements this week. Give us a preview <laughs> of the future. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of different projects build on 1.0. I think the thing that I'm most excited about, of course, is in the open source and open standard space. So I'm like so pumped about Wazzy Web GPU. I can't even tell you like how excited I am. To I can be feel your excitement. Yeah. GPU next to you. workloads uh, with WebAssembly. So we're going to be seeing like Wasm native apps that run everywhere on every device. Uh, with graphics, with uh, interesting types of compute, uh, taking advantage of GPUs uh, in a WASM native way, uh, which is just going to give us that ultimate like portability and flexibility I was talking about before. And we talked uh, previously about the component model, which has been part of yeah. the WASI Preview 2 thing now, and this is a way to take multiple uh, you know, WebAssembly binaries and, and kind of glom them together and build applications out of this, which makes for really, really great composability story. And now that all of those specifications have landed, uh, we're starting to see the launch of registries and things like that where you can store these uh, applications. It's going to be, a, a, I really think that over the next 12 months, we're going to see developers trying a brand new way of building applications by, com by you know, hmm. building conglomerations of these WebAssembly components. And that's, that lights me up, right? Because you get everything from the crossword puzzle solver example to these massively scalable pipelines that are processing tons and tons of data on you know, big Kubernetes clusters somewhere out in the cloud and just about everything in between and out on the edge, right? Yeah, yeah, everywhere. Wasm's going right. to be everywhere, just That's like right. this lovely right. blue carpet. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. All right, last question for you. You know I love to ask this question. 
What, when we have you back on the show, because this has obviously been invigorating and these 15 minutes have flown by. When we have you back on the show next, what do you hope you can say, and maybe it's Wasm is everywhere, so I'm gonna challenge you to say something other than that. Uh, uh, what do you hope you can say that you can't say today? I'm gonna start with you, Matt. Oh yeah, a good prime up a good hard question goes straight to me. I yeah. actually, <laughs> I actually know, you know, that we've got this vision of where WebAssembly is gonna go. And WebAssembly is empowering a new kind of distributed computing. And that's really where we're going over the long term, is we really want to make it possible so that we don't even have to have that conversation. Is it running in the cluster? Is it running on the edge? Is it running near or far edge? Is it running on my watch? We can just start to move WebAssembly modules all over the place, and it's really the application orchestration layer that does that. So that means yeah. development stays simple, and the same kinds of applications can be built, but then compute gets a lot more uh, intelligent as far as the way we move around these applications and then e execute them. We've made the first couple of steps toward that, and Kubernetes played a big role in that. Uh, but I think we're, you know, we're what used to be so far out on the horizon. Now we can see it, and it's taking shape now. And the next time we're here, I hope that's what we're talking about the whole time. Love it. All right. Well, Salt Lake City. I hope that that's what and we the get to... carpet will be purple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I completely agree. Uh, I, I believe that the the world, uh, the way that we solve applications today, it has to be distributed, like necessarily so. Uh, and there's no reason that WASM isn't just that common universal piece of compute that you see running on trains, planes, phones, dishwashers, everything. Because Bosch also has talked about this. Like literally, it's going to be on every device. Everybody's going to be walking around at KubeCon next year, and they're all going to be running WASM. I love it. Well, we look forward to celebrating that, hopefully in Salt Lake and then again in London. Yep. Matt, Bailey, thank you both so much for being here. Seriously awesome panel and great to have the in-depth in WASM discussion. Dustin, I'm really glad you're here and it wasn't Rob. I'm okay, sorry good. about that earlier. <laughs> good. This, is, this was a great <laughs> chat. And thank all of you for tuning in to our continuous coverage here on theCUBE from Paris, France at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech coverage.